All right, the for loop. I remember this thing being one of the most daunting things because there are three statements within the parentheses and it just, it looks really scary, even though it's it's really not. As long as you break it down, it's, it's really easy. So when you know exactly how many times you want to loop through a block of code, use the for loop instead of a while loop. Let me demonstrate what a for loop looks like. So this is what a for loop looks like. Looks really scary, doesn't it? It's really not as long as you break it down. So it's it's three statements. It's this one right here, which declares a variable. This one right here, which checks if the variable is less than, you know, whatever. And then we increment it. So it's essentially a very compact while loop in a way. Let's break it down even further. There we go. I've made a comment out of what it looks like as a blueprint. So we have the first statement, second statement, and the third statement. Now, visually looking at it, it's kind of hard. Here we go. If we break it down like that, that should be easier to read. I think that was my problem the first time. It was really hard to read. There you go. It's just this statement, this statement, and this statement. Personally, this is really ugly to look at, but in order to, you know, make it easier to read, let's keep it like that for now. You would not want to do that in a real world application. Moving on, all you got to do now is console write line. And I'm actually going to write out the value of the variable that we declared in the first statement. That we're also checking against, that we're also incrementing. We're reusing that variable throughout all the statements. So if I were to run this, we can see that it prints out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's five values. And the reason we're printing out 0 the first time is because we are starting at 0. I can actually debug this and show you. So we can see that i has been declared and i is equal to 0. We're also checking if i is less than 5, which is true. That tells this loop to still enter this code block and also increment the, the i. This doesn't get executed the first time. It's only when it comes back. If I were to click F11 to step through, we're going to print out the value, which we did, 0. We're going to go back here and we can see that it jumps to the i++, the increment operator. To increment i, it checks if the condition still is true. Because i is now 1, it is. We're going to print out the number 1. And it does that over and over again. Well, it's actually a lot easier when you put spaces in between here. I think it's a lot more readable. And yeah, and then at the end, once it, you know, is going to check this, this is false. So it's going to run out of or jump out of the code block that belongs to the for loop. There's also a loop called for each, but we're not going to go over that one in this lecture because we haven't gone over collections yet. And it's going to be kind of hard iterating through a collection without even knowing what a collection is. However, honestly, by the videos that you've seen so far, you can build pretty amazing RPG games, like text-based RPG games, if that's what you want to do. So if you want to start working on the project, that's something that I would highly recommend and start building upon it as we're going through these videos. Right, so the next lecture is actually going to be on methods, which I'm super excited for. All right, I'll see you then.